Here's the shave horse that I built with a slab of spruce I milled with the Alaska Chainsaw Mill. All of this oak was victim to a brush fire here on the property. As such, it is extremely hard, it's heat tempered. So I was having some difficulty with the uh, screw head snapping off and that sort of thing. So this piece has a little play in it, but the pressure when you're working it is between the holding bar and the legs. So we'll use it until it falls apart and then build it right. I have the articulating legs pinned to the bench with railroad spikes, which I can back out if I need to do some adjustment and work on it. Basically these joints here, I took the hatchet, shaved down this oak to one inch, drilled one inch holes at an angle into the base, glued and screwed. Cross braces just screwed to the legs. It's got a little bit of play, but it's plenty sturdy enough for what we're doing here. And we'll show you how we turn a black locust blank like this that I split out of nine inch black locust logs with a mallet and a machete into a three quarter inch timber framing peg. So these blanks are an inch or so or more and what we want to do is get this down to a three quarter inch blank that will then turn to make the peg. It's not actually a dowel, it's not a circle, it's an octagon. And so you can see here on the bench that I have laid some marks that are at three quarters of an inch, which tell me if my pin is gonna fit into the eventual holes and I can I've got a narrow end that's going to feed easily into the holes that I bore and then the wide end which should be right around three quarters maybe just a hair fatter make these joints nice and tight so what I'm going to do is first make a square three quarter inch stick and then we'll pull the corners off to make that octagon in the wood we have heartwood and we have sapwood. The heartwood is stronger. And so when making decisions on which side to plane down, we're gonna take most of the material out of the sapwood so that the majority of the peg is heartwood. So we've got a reasonably flat surface on this side of this blank. So with my feet down here on the legs of the sawhorse, I can pull back, which opens the jaws on top. And I'm gonna put as little of this blank in there as I can and still get it to hold. When I put my feet on the legs, that brings the bar forward, clamping the workpiece in very securely. This draw knife, I spent a lot of time sharpening it after I got it out of the box. It's got a pretty darn good edge on it. The, the sharper your edge on your draw knife, the easier this work is going to be, the less fatigue you'll have, the more enjoyable it'll be. So definitely worth taking the time to keep a good edge on this. I did 23 pegs already, then I went ahead and tuned it up and I just did, you know, about four or five strokes with a thousand grit stone and then a six thousand grit stone and then honed it to get it back to a really nice edge. Uh, good sharpening discipline will make all of your woodwork much more enjoyable. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull down an area about like what's extending past the bench uh, surface here. And then I'll be able to use that to hold the piece and work larger sections of it. So basically, I'm just trying to get this end down to a three quarter inch square. With the bevel side up on the draw knife, take light strokes. Don't try to take off too much material at once. Peel this down. Okay, if we look at the end here, 
you can see I have a good flat plane there. We like that. And then I'll basically clean up this side so I've got a good flat edge that's parallel to that. So I will release the jaws with my feet, turn the stock, put it back in, and then I want to get this to three quarters of an inch. Which is probably pretty close to that. So I can check that against my marks here. And sure enough, three quarters of an inch. Now we'll do the sides and get them to that same tolerance, trying to attempt to be square to the two parallel cuts I just made. There's one side. There's the other side. So now we have this on one end. We can check it against our marks on the bench. Sure enough, a nice square three quarter inch stock. So now that end I just did goes into the vise and I can't get all the way to where my cut started. So we'll clean up that middle part later. And then I'm basically going to use those established planes to peel the rest of it down to those dimensions. So I'm not taking corners off or anything. I'm just focusing on getting to square at this point. You can sight down the piece and make sure that your planes are relatively in line. Sharp tool makes all the difference. Okay. So now we have both ends fairly close to our final dimension and just a belly in the middle. So I'll take the half that's reasonably straight, spin the stock around, put that in, then I can clean up these little bellies that are high. Quite easily. Kind of bringing the whole thing down to a consistent square piece. It's going to work in both ends of it. Once we get this thing good and square, it's going to be fairly easy to finish off this peg. So the diameter of this peg is relatively crucial. If it's too small, then it's not going to hold the joint securely. And if it's too large, we run the risk of splitting out the wood that it's going into. The uh, blanks are made of black locust wood, which is super hard super heavy. The timber frame is made out of Douglas fir, which is much softer. So if these are too large, then when you go to drive them in, you're going to split out pieces of the softer wood because this is not going to give against that timber frame. Okay, so we have a nice blank, three quarters of an inch all the way around. We will pull off the corners 
by setting the stock in the vise and then holding the draw knife at a 45 degree angle. And if you look at the end here, you can see I've got that 45 degree angle and essentially I'm looking for every one of these surfaces to be approximately the same length. So that's about 3 16 Okay, so there's the other one. And then I just flip it over and repeat. About like so. So now we have an octagon. Put that in the vise. Do the same thing on the other end. Flip it. Okay, so we have octagons on both ends. And a little bit to clean up in the middle. We'll do that by setting the corners up in the vise. Trim it off. Okay. This one's getting pretty close. I'm liking it on this half. On this half, it's a little fat. We'll go ahead and check both against our reference marks, reference marks here on the bench. So I set the work in there. And this one is within the tolerances, which is good. This one is just about a 16th proud on every side. So we'll just take a little bit more off on this side so I can work those three surfaces from that orientation and flip it over bring down these three Now, we have a nine inch long, three quarter inch octagonal dowel. So we still need to taper down one end so that it's narrower and easily fits into the holes that I'm gonna bore on the timber frame. So we basically, you know, just like the point of a nail. So we put the piece of stock in. And just pair down. And there, we have a completed timber peg dowel.